everyone. So we are headed out of town this weekend to go to the Grand Garden Show on Mackinac Island. If you want to follow along while I'm there, make sure to follow me on Instagram. It's just at Chicago Gardener, just like my channel here. And there I'm going to be posting kind of live updates, photos, stories while we are actually there. Um, again, I do plan to post a vlog with some footage here, but that'll be a little bit later once I get back and get everything edited, but I figured it would be fun to show you how I keep my garden alive while we're out of town. So we are going to be gone for six days technically, so we'll be leaving Saturday morning, so I will plan to water everything that needs to be watered then, and then we'll be getting back Thursday night, and the first thing I do whenever we're gone is run upstairs and see how my garden looks. So between that time, I have a few things in place to help keep my garden alive. So I would say the most important thing I have is my automated watering system. So this was something I put into my garden last year. So there were two years before that where whenever we go to town, I would try a bunch of different options. So I tried things like filling a milk jug with water and putting like little pinpricks in it. That drained way too quickly to keep things alive. Um, I have tried some of the like ceramic or, like little tube things that you put a wine bottle in. Those did okay, but nothing really gave me kind of the peace of mind as having my drip system because I knew for the most part that that was going to run on a regular basis. Now, last year I had the same drip systems I have right now, but I had a timer that worked great. I mean, I could schedule it and it would run at whatever scheduled time, but I didn't have any way to connect to it when I was out of town. So this year I invested in, I think it's called the Orbit Beehive timer, which connects to my phone, which means that not only can I run it from my phone if I need to, but I can also see if it has ran. And it also has a feature where if it has rained, it automatically shuts off. So instead of me worrying about, uh, like for example, before I had this timer, my garden getting too much water, let's say it rained when I was out and then it also ran the automated watering, it might cause too much water to get to some of my plants. Um, now I can see, okay, there's a rain delay. Did it actually run, yes or no? And then if it didn't rain, which sometimes happens, so it'll go um, off because it's supposed to rain, then it doesn't rain, I can actually run it manually from my phone too. So I would say that's the number one thing I would suggest uh, investing in for your garden. Even if you have a small garden, just that peace of mind if you are somebody that leaves town on a you know, fairly regular basis, or even if not, even if you just head out a couple times during the summer, it's nice to have that running. Even if you only ever use it when you're out of town, I still think it's worth the investment and in setting that up. So that is the number one thing that I have. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't go to all of my plants in the garden. I will take you over and show you what is hooked up to the drip system in just a little bit. But I have so many containers, front and back deck now that that can't cover everything. Now I do plan next year to expand it a little bit more and hopefully get even more of the pots covered than I have now, but next year is not this year, so I'll have to wait on that. So my other thing that we were doing is we have a cat sitter who helps keep our, keeps our cats alive, who will be coming over and then also hand watering everything as well. And they will be coming over every day so they'll be able to come out here and water the garden. So having those two things in place, I mean, really should be it and make sure my garden is watered. But there are some other tips that I have as well that I will be doing just to help, well, one, make it easier for the person to water because they're not somebody that's here, you know, regularly and knows the garden and knows what needs to be watered and what doesn't. So I'm going to rearrange things to make that as easy as possible for them. Um, but also just in case you don't have things like a person coming over to pet sit that can water your garden or an automated drip system. I'll show you some of the other things that I still do and have done in the past to keep my plants alive. So one thing I've already done this year that you will have seen in a recent video is I've gone ahead and pulled any plants that really don't have much life left in them. Um, again, just to make it easier for the person that's coming over to water. So I think I've actually removed 10 containers of plants that they no longer have to water. So if it is getting near the end of the season when you're heading out of town, I definitely think that's something that you can decide to do. You know, it was a little bit sad pulling the sunflowers, but I knew when I got back anyway, they probably would look even worse than they were already looking. So it was worth it to me to go ahead and just remove those. Now it'll be a little bit different if it's early on in the season. I always, I feel like, get more stressed early on um, if we're heading out of town than I am kind of once the plants are more established or if I've, you know, just started some seeds and we have to head out of town because those I keep watered more consistently than I do the plants that are already growing. So 
that is going to be dependent on what time you are in the season. But if there is anything that you can kind of get rid of to make it easier, I would say go ahead and pull those plants. The next tip, which I'm going to do a little bit of here with you today, is moving plants to the shade. So even my plants that really love the full sun, I will move to the shade when we are out of town because obviously if the plant is in the shade, it's not going to use up the water as quickly as it would be if it were in a full sun environment. So anything that's not hooked up to drip because obviously I can't move those around, um, but the plants that aren't hooked up to drip, I will shift those over to the shadiest part of the deck. Again, just so that the water lasts a little bit longer in them. Now, this year I got all of my herbs hooked up to drip, which was fantastic because those are the smallest pots in my garden. They dry out the fastest, so now I don't have to move those. So that's been really nice, but everything else, um, pretty much I'm gonna sh either shift into the shade or I'm gonna move them closer together. So moving plants closer together kind of has a few benefits. One, again, ease of watering for the person that is going to come over. I can say all of the plants in that corner are the ones that need to be hand watered and that'll be just simple for them. Um, that way, to, I don't want to make something too complicated and have to have them, you know, here for an hour trying to figure out what plants to water. But other than that, pushing them close together kind of helps to create a little bit of a microclimate. And I found that when I have my plants all pushed together, they don't dry out as quickly as they would if they were spread apart. Um, so it does help to kind of shade the soil. And I will even do, I'll show you this with my morning glory, I'm going to put a plant so that the leaves of the plant go over the soil in the pot. Again, just creating a bit more shade um, and that way it holds on and retains moisture. Now, something else you can do, and obviously these tips are all container garden related because if your containers are in the ground, you can't really move them around very easily, um, but you can bring plants inside. I don't know if any of the plants right now I'm gonna bring inside. I was considering potentially the ferns, but I only have two, so I think I am gonna leave them outside. Um, but I did have a very, very small, I think it was like, five inch diameter pot of alyssum on my center table, which I have since gone ahead and pulled. But if I didn't, or if I still had that, I would move that inside. So anything that's in a very, very small pot, I uh, could just bring inside, you know, give them a good spray, make sure there's no bugs hiding on them, and then just put them by a sunny window. And I've had success with that for even, I think a little bit over a week last year. So keep that into consideration that Plants that are small that you think are going to dry out too fast where even if you have you know someone coming over to water on a regular basis you can bring those inside I water them once and that's it I don't have to water them until I'm back another option is self watering containers I only have I think one in the garden right now and I purchased that on accident but I have had them more in the past but obviously getting my drip system meant that I didn't need these self-watering pots as much anymore. And that really does hold on to water and works pretty well. So it's one of my rhubarbs is in it right now. And I can basically get away with watering that once a week. So that's what I'll do, I'll water it. And then the reservoir at the bottom holds water as well. Um, and then that should be fine the entire time. There are also some plants that I just know in my garden that I only water once a week. So my raspberry bushes, my blueberry bushes, the large ones. Um, trying to think what else there is. Oh, my hydrangeas, I only water once a week. So those, I'm gonna do my watering Sunday morning, Saturday morning before we head out. I'm gonna put those in a different part of the deck altogether, um, just so that the person coming over knows that they don't have to worry about watering those. And again, those should be good by the time I'm back in town. So let me show you the setup on the back deck here. So nothing here is set up on drip. I do plan to change that next year, um, but basically everything that is going to be watered daily, I've put in this one section. So most of the plants were already here. Some things like the fern were over here. Some of the roses and blueberries were more spread out, but I've just gathered everything together. Again, one, to make it easier for the person watering. I'm gonna leave the hose lane here set to the shower setting so they don't have to do anything except pick it up and water the plants. Um, so here I have my fern, some gomphrina, and then all of the blueberries and rose plants. And then on this side I have some of the cool weather crops, uh, another gomphrina, and then all the flowers and peppers. And again, just shoving them a little bit closer together um, to kind of help all the plants keep each other alive. Now back here I have one more plant and that is this raspberry bush. Now this one does not have to be watered once a day and because I don't want to overwater things while I'm out, I just push this over in the corner. So you can see here where 
the sun comes over the wall so there's about a I don't know, maybe a foot and a half of shade consistently throughout the day so even though the leaves are mostly in the sun the soil itself is covered by the shade and also the leaves of the plant so this should help keep the soil moist for longer this is again one that i pretty much only water once a week so i'm going to water this one uh, saturday morning until it runs out the bottom and that should be good to last throughout the week um, another thing that helps with it being all the way over here is so the person knows they do not have to water this plant we are back out in the front garden this is my hose that is never actually rolled back up and put away but here is what is set up on the drip so basically everything along this back wall and one of the benefits of pulling plants that are kind of at the end of their life is that it freed up some extra drips so i had a sunflower here that i cut down now i was able to move the asters and the aronia berry that are growing in this container that were previously not up on a drip into a drip um there's also a rhubarb over here that got the drip that my cantaloupe was on so everything again along this wall is on the drip this center raised bed is on a drip this bed this container the three grow bags and then that bed are also on a drip this is the container that is self-watering so that one will not need a drip these containers here i also only water once a week because they are in shade the majority of the day being blocked by this bed here and the other section set up on drip is all of my herbs which makes me so incredibly happy that i don't have to worry about all these staying alive while i'm out of town these containers here are not set up on drip but these are the ones i was talking about that i really only water once a week anyway so watering them saturday morning right before we leave i should be good to go i'm gonna let the person know that they can like see if anything looks like it's starting to droop they can water it i'm also crossing my fingers uh, right now we have a couple days of rain projected we'll see if that actually happens and then along here i have the hydrangeas and elephant ear in the shade again these only typically need to be watered about once a week then over here is what actually needs to be hand watered by the person coming over um, so i have my strawberry lemon tree there's some beets back there another fern all the containers in here and then the morning glory container which is over here behind the fern so actually i mean this is for the size of my garden not a lot of containers that need to be hand watered while i'm away so i'm actually kind of impressed with that so the morning glory pot is back here and usually there's nothing in front of it so the sun would be hitting it right now um, but i've gone ahead and moved this fern which the only thing I'm a little bit nervous about is the sun hitting it because it's usually in a shadier part. So I'm hoping it doesn't burn too much, but I guess we'll see. Um, but this is now blocking the shade or blocking the sun um, and keeping the pot shaded here with its leaves. So that again should make it hold on to water pretty well. Fingers crossed. So now I want to talk about some of the other things I'm doing just to kind of get my garden ready that don't necessarily have to do with keeping it alive. Um, so one, I am going to fertilize everything. This is just happens to fall on my regular weekly fertilizing. Usually I do that on a Friday. Sometimes it gets delayed a little bit. I do it on a Sunday, um, but I'm just going to do it anyways so that we have that ready to go. Um, I also am going to deadhead any flowers again, just so any of the flowers that are kind of near their end of their life, I can get rid of them. The plant is going to focus on producing seed instead. It's going to focus on producing new flowers. Also, I'm going to pick the flowers and the ones that aren't too far gone, I'm going to make a little bouquet for the person that's coming over. Obviously, we're paying them as well, um, giving them a bouquet that they can take home. I'm also going to be picking the vegetables. So tomatoes, you know, I'm pretty much picking some every day. So I'm hoping in the time that we're gone, there won't be some that are left too long on the plant to be edible, but I am going to harvest a bunch of tomatoes, peppers. I don't know if any of my cool weather crops radishes basically will be ready to harvest those probably won't be until i'm back um but then i'll just leave a bag of vegetables as well for the cat sitter that's coming over and watering the garden so i'll just remove everything that i know is kind of near the 
end of its life, whether it's the flowers or the produce, get those off the plant so the plant can focus on producing new growth or new flowers or new tomatoes um, instead of hanging on to the old ones. Also, it means a lot less work for me when I get back. So that is how I plan to keep my garden alive. If you don't have a drip system, I can't recommend it enough. It's not that expensive. I think the Proven Winners drip kit was maybe like $40. And then the first timer that I got was I think $15 or $20. The Orb Beehive is definitely more expensive, then you definitely get more from it as well. But you can find very cost efficient options for a drip system in your container garden. And it just gives you such a good peace of mind. I mean, even if you only use it when you're out of town, I still think it's worth getting that set up. Um, and then if you don't have a drip system right now, or you don't have someone that's coming over to water your garden, then definitely moving your plants into the shade even if they traditionally like full sun, making sure that you are packing them together. And then if you need to bring some inside, you can do that as well. Uh, but I hope those tips were helpful. If you ever have had success with like the jugs or water bottles upside down, let me know because I just haven't found an option like that that works for me and I would love to have some of those options available for my containers that are not set up on my trip system. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be everything. I'm very excited to head out to the garden show. Um, we will see if all of my garden has survived when I get back.